In this video today, we're going to talk about alpha levels and p-values for what we know as hypothesis testing. Okay, and they're quite intricately related. And it also goes along, alpha level goes along with what we call as the Z star or T star. And the p-values go along with our Z test statistic or our T test statistic. So, how to make this rule, this alpha level or significant level, alpha, well, it's basically our rule where we decide that our result from our sample is unexpected now. So for example, consider if we had a Coke can. I know that this Coke can gets filled up and it's supposed to be 500 milliliters, but machines are such that not every single one is gonna be exactly 500. So if I had a 499 milliliter and a 501 and a 500.5, these values of how full the, the Coke can would not surprise you, I'm sure. And if I got an average of all these together, and if, my, if I got a sample of, let's say, 20, my average was 500.2, this would not surprise you, I don't think. I think that's expected. But if I was really crazy, if I got a sample of 20, and I got a sample of these 20 cans that had an average milliliter of 400 f four, uh, 451 as my average, I think that would surprise you. I would not expect it if this is what it was supposed to be. And so the alpha level is basically your rule of thumb of when does it go from I expect this to I do not expect this. So if I, so if I think a bunch of numbers now, right? I know if I'm supposed to have 500 milliliters, I don't think anyone, if I had a group of sample of let's say 10 bottles, if the mean was 499 of my sample, I don't think that would surprise anyone. If the mean was 400 milliliters, I think that would surprise people. So somewhere between these two numbers, we made a decision to say, now it's unexpected. So maybe if I had 498, that would still be re reasonable. But how about 490? If I got an average of 490, would I think, oh, this machine is broken and it's not calibrated correctly to get 500 milliliters per, bo per bottle? Some might say, yes, it's broken. Some might say, ah, oh, it's just average random variation. Uh, a bit unexpected, a kind of like a fluky kind of sample, but it's possible. It is possible that the average bottle is 500 and our sample is 490. And so you have to decide where's your line in the sand? Is it going to be 497 or is it 496? It's where do you decide that it's just a strange sample or the machine is not calibrated correctly? And so that idea is what we call the alpha level. We've put a numerical value to it, and for no good reason, it is often 0 0.05. But that's what alpha means. It's your line in the sand of where do you believe that is no longer just random variation, as 499 would be, but there's a problem with the machine. Like 400 milliliters means there's a problem with the machine. But that line has to be drawn somewhere between those two, and it's a definitive line and we call that line alpha. So there's idea, our idea of alpha. And when we do our null hypothesis, we also do this thing that we call, uh, we are looking at, there's three possibilities. We could say that the alternative hypothesis, well, the null hypothesis in this case would be mu equals zero. The alternative could be mu is bigger than zero, which would mean I have a one, this is called a one tail test. And somewhere over here, typically, I'm looking at this region here. It's on the right hand side. And this test statistic, we count this value, our line in the sand, our alpha value. If alpha is 0 0.05, that means this area alpha is 0 0.05. And the t value, the t star corresponds to it as would the z star. Similarly, 
if I had a one tail test, but it was less than zero, here would be my test statistic, either T star or Z star. And this area here, again, would be alpha, it would be 0 0.05. And this region here, we call this region, we call this the critical region. If we had not equal to, I get a similar kind of graph. I get my t distribution as such, or normal distribution. Here's zero. But together, this part and this part together, these here, because it's not, this is called a two tail, a two tail test. These two together add up to alpha. So this is z this one here is 0 0.025, and this is 0 0.025. But again, these is called the critical region. Okay, and so we also know though that this is still t star and z star, and t star and z star. Okay, and so. This is all where we are making our rule, okay? So we make our rule with alpha, and we make our rule with T star. Alpha is the area under the curve, and this is the position on the axis, on axis. Now, what happens though is we do, we get a sample we go out and we get ourselves a sample. And that sample gets a test statistic, T. And that T may end up being over here, relatively speaking. Or maybe it ends up being over here, relatively speaking. If T is here, well, that's not an unexpected result. So that we would, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. If it was over in this region here, then we would reject the null hypothesis because it's inside the critical region. So if the T value is inside the critical region, we reject H naught if in the critical region. Similarly here, we compare T to T star. If T is inside the critical region, we reject. And so we compare T, the T star, to T. We compare these two. And we either reject or fail to reject based upon that. And it is a position on the x-axis. Now I say T, but know that it could also be Z star with Z. These are interchangeable dependent upon which curve you're using, the T or the Z. But we also know that this area if this is my t value here, then this area here, this black area, is our p value. And so the p, this area would be smaller than alpha. I would reject it. If this is my p value, the p value is larger than alpha, then I failed to reject the null hypothesis. So with area, I look at alpha and I compare it to my p-value. So the alpha I compare with p-values, the t star I compare with t's. But I know that these are two representations of the same thing. These are actually the same thing, just one's area, one's position. These are also representations of the same thing except this, they define my critical region, they define the critical region, but this does it by area, and this does it by position on the number line. The only thing to be careful about with a two-tailed test is this area here. So if I have a, a value of t here, I get this area, but then I also have to take the corresponding one over here, this. These together make the p-value. So you find your area and you multiply it by two, you double it. And so that's what the p-value, alpha, t, and t star all 
mean and relate to each other. It's really important that you understand this relationship. Let's do a little bit of uh, making conclusions. So if the p-value is small, okay, if the p-value is small, the probability of obtaining this result from a random sampling is very rare, is more rare. It's very unexpected. If p is small, if p is small, that means we're in this region here. This doesn't happen very often. And thus, we will reject the null hypothesis. Okay? So I often think about whether it's small or large. If the p-value is large, the probability of obtaining a result from a random sample is more frequent. Right? So that means the p-value is over here somewhere. This kind of is p is quite large relative to alpha, and it's not unexpected. It's not a surprising to us at all. That's just random variation. So it's more frequent result, thus we fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so if we reject the null hypothesis, then we have strong evidence to support the alternative, alternative hypothesis. If we fail to reject the null hypothesis, then we have insufficient evidence to support the alternative hypothesis. Okay, so when you make a conclusion, you always have to make the conclusion with the p-value compared to alpha, to the alpha value, or the t-value compared to t-star. And now, remember, this could be z as well compared to z-star. All right. But, so you make this initial statement with these two about the alter null hypothesis, but then you give your conclusion in terms of the alternative hypothesis, whether you support it, whether there's evidence to support the alternative or not support it. Okay, so let's do an example here. And this is purely computational and trying to get towards the idea of understanding. So if I have a normal curve where my mean is g. And because my alternative hypothesis is not g, it means there's going to be a two-tailed test, where this value here is z star, as is this value here is the negative value of z star, and alpha is 0 0.05. So that means this area here is half of alpha, because it's a two-tailed test, as is this area here. It is also half of alpha. So before I even talk about z, well, z star must have a value. And if I go to my distributions, and if I do inverse normal, my area is 0 0.025. We'll do our standard normal curve. And so our z star value is negative 1.96. So this is negative 1.96. This is positive 1.96 positioned on the line here. And this is zero because I'm talking about the normal, the standard normal curve. So that's the setup. I've done no statistics yet. Now, once I switch over to statistics, I've cal let's pretend I've calculated this z value. Well, if this is 1.96, my z is here. This is z, 1.7. It is not inside this critical region, okay? It's not in critical region, okay? So, I therefore, I would fail to reject, fail to reject the null hypothesis. And it is, go to B part, it is, it is statistically not, or not statistically significant. There's nothing to talk about. It's not unexpected. Okay? So I made this analysis by comparing z to z star. 
I could just as easily have found this area here. This area and then multiplied it times 2 to get the p-value. So if I do that, I'm going to do normal CDF, my normal CDF, and I'm going to go negative 1.7, negative 1.7, because by symmetry it will be the same situation. And this area, this half of the area here is 0 0.04456. So my p-value is going to be this times 2. So times 2. So my p-value, my p-value is equal to 0 0.0891. Well, alpha, I was told, was 0 0.05. So since the p-value is large, the p-value is larger than alpha. It's large again. I make the same conclusion. So I can compare p to alpha, or I can also compare z to z star. It's all a matter of seeing if it's in the critical region or not. Uh, so the corresponding critical value for this alpha level, well, that was 1.96 for this alpha level. And the p-value was 0 0.891. If this would have been a one-tailed test, I only would have looked at one half of the tails.